Hi, my name is Jared Beeman, and I'm a sales engineer for Tecla Structures. Today, I'll be walking you through the list manager extension that's available on the Tecla warehouse. This list manager is a generic application that can manage objects and issue reports and help you keep track of the parts, assemblies, pores, rebar, welds inside of your model. It can detect changes in the number of objects in the list, and I think it's a really good solution just for generating reports of specific groups of objects by selection filter or objects that you want to manually add and create reports of. It really speeds up the process of creating or generating multiple reports of different types for different materials all in one go. And today I'm going to walk you through how to use it and give you some inspiration, at least how you can apply it to your own work. I have an example set up here that I'm going to walk through. Let me just give you a high level overview of what I'll be showing. So I have a group of objects for my concrete walls that's going to create a concrete parts takeoff. I have reinforcement that's creating two types of reports, a bar schedule and my bar tags. And I'm also creating a report of all of my steel beams on the second level. With these different groups of objects, I can create all of these reports within one click. If I have a group of objects that is being revised, if there's going to be changes, I can add a revision. I can issue a new set of reports. And I can view all the objects that are inside of these groups. So if I want to identify where objects have changed, it's going to show up in the list. If they've changed, it'll be sorted by the assembly mark, or in this case, by the rebar mark. If we're adding poor objects, those will be sorted by the poor number. And we'll be able to see which objects are going to be reported, how many numbers of those objects there are in the model, if there's been any changes, and a few other properties. All right, let's go ahead and walk through an example of how we could set up these groups of objects to report on. And we'll go ahead and go over to the list manager in the applications and components catalog. I'll double click on that. Now for grabbing or saving this information in our Trimble Connect project, it's going to show up on the top list manager cloud. If you're not connected to a Trimble Connect project, it'll just show as offline. So it'll load and save these groups of objects that we create and track that using Trimble Connect. If it's offline, it'll just be saving it locally to your model. So let's create, define a group of objects and I'm just going to go through using a filter option today. So let's define a group for concrete walls. So for this filter, I have a CIP wall filter, and I'm just going to be bringing in parts. We could just use the standard filter or the filter that's empty, and then just choose to bring in all of our steel assemblies or all of our cast units. If you want a specific type of part or a specific type of steel assembly, then you'll want to apply a filter here. Now these report settings are something you can save away and place those into your firm folder. Um, these are created in a different step, which I'll get to in a second. So the idea with these is you can copy these files that are saved in your attributes folder. Um, so you have access to them for a new project when you have a group of reports that you want to report for these objects. So I'll click OK. Now if I select on this group, it'll show me the reports that are going to be created for this group. If I click on this Edit Reports button over on the right side, here's where I can customize what reports are being created. So if I want to add a new report, let's say I want to do a takeoff by phase, I'll add that over as well. And those drop down options, you saw that I selected the cast in place walls or concrete walls. Here's where that is found. So if I type in a new one, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And let's go back to this section. Let's save one that's for steel beams. So let me remove that one and that one. I'm going to add this over. OK, now I'll save this setting. 
So now that's in my model folder, in my attributes folder, and then you can move that to your firm. Okay, now I have that saved. So when I create my steel beams group, I just wanted to show you where I can select that option. So I'm just going to cancel out to keep those two reports. Okay, let's add another method. Let's do a filter. Um, I can pick a filter for reinforcing. Um, all I'm bringing in is reinforcement, so it's not totally necessary to define that. Let's call this list name reinforcement, and I have a group of reports for rebar. This is going to create a bar schedule and a bar tags PDF, so then I'll click OK. I'll have my new group selected, and let's do one more for the steel beams floor number two. And I have a filter that's grabbing my beams that are just on level two. So I'll select those as parts. There's that steel beam setting I created. Now I'll click OK. All right, so now we can browse through these groups of objects. So I can see my reinforcement. This is just double checking that I know what, what are in these groups. There I can see just my steel beams on the second floor, go back to my concrete walls. That looks all good. Okay, so now for each of these groups, we'll be able to see all of the objects that are associated to them. So we can select them from the list. If I go over to my steel beams, um, I can sort by the position mark. So I can grab a, a specific set if I want to see where they are. Now, once we make changes, like let's grab this wall panel right here and make a copy. Just copy it over to the left. All right, let's just run numbering again. And if I go to this concrete walls list, there's no change indication right now. So I'll click on Refresh All, and depending how large your model is, how many objects you're bringing into these groups, it could take uh, some time depending on how many there are. Okay, so here's a, a good example of how it's able to track objects and their changes. So I can see that there's been a quantity increase, and it will even show me what the changes are. So if it's deleted or if there are new ones, like it's showing changes in the list, that's plus one. It'll let you know that along with the icon. So it's just knowing, hey, there's been a number that's increased. Here's the exact number for that. If I want to create a report of a group, I can either select on that row and press report. Or I can right click on the row and press report as well. So if I just take a look at this concrete parts takeoff. Okay, I can see I've got all of my walls exported to that report. Now if I go back and let's do reinforcement. Here, let's just click this report button. All right, now if I pull up the rebar tags PDF, I can see I have that file and whatever other reports that I had to find for that group. We can also issue revisions or create issues. So let's first create an issue, and I'm going to press this issue button up at the top. It'll be a new issue. Click OK. So this will be my first issue. When we run that issue button, it's going to create a folder in the reports folder called issued by list manager. and there will be a 001 um, issue with today's date. Now we can also add in revisions. So let's say that this revision is our, let's just do number two. Okay, I can do another issue. Let's say that this is a new issue, so it'll automatically add in a new number. And then I'll have a separate uh, folder for those. So you can have a historical account of these different issues to, to see their changes. And it's just managed a lot easier than 
having to create your own folder structure or name these all, uh, name all of the reports in a specific way to see which version they are. That concludes the content for today's video. I wanted to give a high level overview of the list manager, how we can create these groups of objects with a creation method of using a filter, how we can bring those objects in and assign specific reports to them and customize those settings. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of the capabilities of the list manager. I know we didn't go through every single feature, but make sure you go into the Tecla user assistance. There's a page specifically for the list manager. It goes over in greater detail about the logic of the tool and how it works. Um, an overview of every button and all of its different functionalities. And there's also some custom properties that can be written to the objects to help you with reporting and tracking these changes. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.